Firstly, red foxes were introduced to Australia in the 19th century to hunt rabbits. However, after rabbit populations exploded, red foxes shifted to attacking poultry species. Foxes have no natural predators in Australia. Consequently, they breed rapidly. A single red fox can produce four to 10 offspring per year. The proliferation of the red fox population poses a challenging scenario for Australian farmers and alters the ecosystem. Due to their nocturnal hunting behavior, using acute hearing and a keen sense of smell to detect prey, controlling and preventing fox attacks on poultry by Australian farmers becomes increasingly difficult. The poultry farming industry, facing losses of 50 to 100 million USD, confronts a dual challenge, not only reducing profits but also threatening economic stability. This poses a challenge for the farming community and drives demand for management and control measures to minimize the impact of foxes on poultry farms. Australian farmers employ tactics like installing barbed wire fences and constructing modern farm enclosures. However, the effectiveness and ethicality of these measures remain contentious. Barbed wire fences, standing 1.5 to 2 meters tall, aim to deter farm intrusion, yet their installation requires significant time and effort, including digging trenches, setting posts, and stretching wire. While reducing fox intrusions, it may also pose risks to other wildlife species. The red fox hunting measure is an important strategy implemented when their population reaches threatening levels to the environment and poultry in Australia. Here is an overview of how the hunting process is conducted and assessed by the community. Red fox hunting focuses on reducing their population and is carried out year-round. However, there are specific regulations in each state. In Queensland, hunting is only allowed from May to August. Setting fox traps is a crucial part of the control strategy involving selecting trap locations where foxes commonly pass, preparing traps securely, and setting them at appropriate times. Red fox hunting is a common practice in Australia, especially in agricultural areas where foxes can harm poultry. This helps protect the national resource from the negative impacts of red fox populations. Red fox is considered an invasive species detrimental to the Australian ecosystem. Hunting is deemed an effective measure to control fox populations and protect native wildlife. However, many argue that hunting is not an efficient method for fox control, as it can harm other animal species and their habitats. The Australian government is striving to find a balance between environmental conservation and ethical considerations regarding fox hunting. If you believe that constructing modern enclosures and installing fences is effective in protecting poultry farms against foxes, comment 1.
If you agree with hunting and trapping foxes, comment zero, like and subscribe for more upcoming videos, Native to the lower Mississippi River Valley in the United States and many other aquatic systems in northeastern Mexico. Red-eared sliders have been introduced throughout the world and now occupy parts of all foreign continents, except Antarctica. Many are released as unwanted pets after the colorful turtles outgrow their homes are released as part of traditional religious traditions. Red-eared sliders have long been blamed by conservationists as one of the reasons for the decline of native turtles when they are introduced outside their native range. Claims in the scientific literature that RES are responsible for negative impacts of native turtles are sometimes exaggerated or lack solid evidence from experimental research under natural conditions. The rapid proliferation of red-eared sliders worldwide earned the species a place on the global database's list of the 100 worst invasive species in 2000. Red-eared sliders have been introduced to Europe, breed in warmer Mediterranean climates as well as in more temperature climates, and their presence is thought to have a negative impact on the European pond turtle. Amy's orbicularis, but by evidence as speculative or based on small-scale experiments in artificial conditions that may not reflect interactions in complex natural environments. Woodlands altered and degraded by human activity are the turtle rather than the exception globally, providing new habitats that can challenge native species, including turtles. Disentangling the adverse effects of invasive species dominance from other causes of species decline is difficult because of the co-founding and interacting effects of human impacts on aquatic systems. As omnivores and habitat generalists, red-eared sliders appears to be well adapted to benefit from these changes and often dominate the de-regarded urban environments where they are introduced. Each red-eared turtle can lay 50 to 100 eggs per year. They are able to survive in harsh habitats. Red-eared sliders can withstand low temperatures, dirty water, and lack of food. Under the Endangered Species Act ACA, recognized as dangerous invasive species, this implies that the sale, position, and release of red-eared sliders into the wild are federally prohibited. Under the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, regulations have been established to prevent the spread of red-eared sliders. Additionally, various states and the United States have enacted their own measures to address the problem of invasive red-eared sliders. Many people have enforced laws prohibiting keeping red-eared turtles as pets. These regulations are intended to minimize the impact of this invasive species on local ecosystems and protect native wildlife. It is important that individuals are aware of and comply with these regulations 
to prevent the unintended spread of red-eared slider turtles. This includes not keeping them as pets and reporting any sightings of these turtles in their natural habitat to the relevant authorities. Injecting birth control drugs for red ear turtles is a non-invasive birth control method used to prevent the laying of eggs in this species of turtle. The procedure involves injecting a drug called progestin into the female red-eared turtle's body. Progestin or progestine is a female sex hormone that has the ability to inhibit ovulation and reproduction. Using nets to capture invasive red-eared turtles is a popular solution for controlling this species population. This method is often deployed using large nets to capture red-eared turtles when they operate in coastal areas. This activity takes place from April to October, the period when red-eared turtles actively reproduce and lay eggs. Water between 68 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal for the growth of red-eared sliders. During this time, they often appear near the water's edge to search for food and establish nests to lay eggs. Net rackets are typically constructed from nylon mesh, measuring about 6.6 .6 feet in length and about 9.8 feet in width. The nets are then dropped into the water and moved along the banks of rivers, lakes, and ponds to capture red-eared turtles. Every day, this method can catch from 50 to 100 red-eared turtles. However, the number depends on many factors, such as the size of the area to be controlled, the density of red-eared turtles, and the weather conditions. According to research using nets to catch invasive red-eared turtles, it can reduce the species by about 20 to 30 percent each year. And for now, let's continue watching the rest of the video to also see how the U.S. farmers deal with invasive catfish populations. The red fox, an animal native to Europe, was introduced to Florida in the early 20th century. However, in recent years, the number of red foxes in Florida has increased significantly, with an estimated number of 1.5 million red foxes living in this state. This has created serious challenges for the farming community and the livestock and poultry farmers. One of the main problems caused by red foxes is damaging to the livestock and poultry. Red foxes are capable of attacking and eating many types of livestock, especially sheep, goats, chickens, ducks, and many other animals. This has caused great losses to farmers, not only from the perspective of livestock loss, but also from an economic perspective, amounting to thousands of dollars each year. In 2022, a farmer in Florida faced the loss of 20 sheep due to the red fox attack. This attack not only created a loss of livestock, but also caused a sense of fear and insecurity in the farming community. In 2023, another chicken farm also experienced a disaster when it lost up to 100 chickens, falling a victim to the red fox predation.
but also affects the livestock industry and the local economy. Therefore, control measures such as daytime hunting of red foxes have become a necessary solution to mitigate the negative effects of the sudden increase in the red fox populations in Florida. Lake trapping is one of the most unique and effective solutions in the fight to control the red fox population in Florida, first implemented in the 1970s. This method not only reduces red fox numbers, but also brings many benefits to both farms and the environment in which they operate. The lake clam trap has a simple structure, but is extremely effective. When they step up to eat the bait, the iron clamp will close, clamping the red fox's legs and preventing them from escaping the trap. Location selection is important. Traps should be placed in areas where red foxes often appear, such as near livestock barns or crop fields. Traps need to be carefully tested to ensure robust and reliable operations. Hiding the trap by covering it with leaves or dry grass helps keeping the trap undetected by red fox. When setting traps, it is most importantly to follow safety rules, such as not placing the traps in areas with children or pets, and avoiding placing them on walking paths or roads. Traps also need to be checked regularly to ensure that only red foxes are caught and that non-targeted animals are not injured in that process. Ideal areas to place lake pen traps are near livestock farms, especially sheep, goat, chicken, duck farms, and crop fields especially where there is a lot of food for red foxes such as animal carcasses. Red fox spot trapping has been implemented in Florida since the 1970s and has brought significant positive results. Each year, about 200,000 red foxes are caught in lake traps significantly reducing the red fox population. Thanks to this measure, the damage caused by the red foxes to farms has also decreased by about 50% compared to previous implementations. However, like all solutions, the food trap method cannot avoid limitations. It can cause pain and injuries to red foxes catch non-target animals as well, and can pollute the environment sometimes. So this requires close cooperation between authorities, farmers, and communities to ensure that this measure is implemented effectively and sustainably, minimizing negative impacts for the environment. Consideration and attention to these issues will help us continue to be proactive in maintaining the natural balance and protecting the life resources. Florida, where red foxes are becoming a threat to farmers and the environment, has implemented an aggressive control measure by hunting red foxes during the day. This method is not only a popular and effective solution, but for many locals, it is the salvation of concerns about the red fox damage. The process of hunting red foxes during the day requires careful preparation and compliance with safety rules. First, operators need to choose hunting areas wisely, prioritizing places where red foxes often appear, such as near livestock barns or crop fields. Necessary equipment includes guns, ammunition, protective uniforms, and other safety equipment.
Searching for red foxes plays an important role in the hunting process. Using a telescope or binoculars helps hunters identify red foxes from far, which increases the likelihood of hunting success. The most important step is that when discovering red foxes, hunters need to shoot them down accurately and safely. Precision and technique are important to avoid unwanted injuries and ensure safety during hunting. However, when participating in hunting activities, operators need to pay attention to local regulations and guidelines to ensure compliance. Using guns with appropriate power and shooting red foxes in a safe location is also an important factor in reducing risks to the community and the surrounding environment. Daytime hunting of red foxes has been widely implemented in all areas of Florida, especially in rural areas where red foxes are most abundant. According to estimates, every year about 100,000 red foxes are shot down, significantly reducing the red fox population. Although this measure is effective, it is also important to be aware of its disadvantages. As red foxes hunting can be dangerous to humans and other animals if not done properly, the risk of environmental pollution if red fox carcasses are not properly disposed of is an aspect that needs attention. Therefore, cooperation between authorities, farmers, and communities is important to ensure that the hunting is carried out safely, effectively, and sustainably, while minimizing negative impacts on the environment, as this will help maintain the natural balance and protect agricultural resources in Florida. And finally, my dear audience, please, if you found this video interesting, comment number one below right now. Thank you so much for watching this whole entire video. Until then, see you next time. Australian culture is the first thing you will know. Australians may hold to the tradition of eating livestock and poultry, and accepting invasive fox meat may conflict with this teaching. Foxes are often considered invasive and harmful, creating fear and discomfort in consuming their meat. Health concerns also plays an important role in the Australian's decisions. Fox meat can carry dangerous pathogens such as rabies and helminths, increasing the risk of infection when processed and consumed improperly. And this creates a prevention mentality, making people not wanting to experiment with foods that can pose health risks. Foxes are considered intelligent and sentient animals. Adding to the growing discomfort that Australians face eating meat from an animal that can sense pain and fear. This creates a psychological rejection of fox meat consumption due to empathy and respect for the animal. The fox meat with its tough nature and unpleasant taste poses a challenge in preparing it thoroughly. Long processing also increases production costs, but this is unavoidable in the face of wild fox hunting, a process that requires labor and expertise.
the high cost of transporting and preventing fox meat puts great pressure on prices. This poses a challenge for the consumer market, where many Australians do not favor fox meat due to cultural and taste reasons. The most invasive areas, such as New South Wales, face high hunting costs and limited consumer markets. In contrast, Tasmania, with its effective fox control program, has reduced its fox population by 70% in 10 years, providing positive prospects. Recognizing the ecological impact of invasive foxes, the Australian government has implemented rigorous regulations to oversee the hunting and consumption of their meat. The primary objective is clear, to preserve the environment, maintain biodiversity, and ensure public health. However, a closer examination reveals a tapestry of legal intricacies. Farmers find themselves entangled in complex complicities when seeking specialized hunting licenses from local authorities. These licenses are granted only when farmers can substantiate the damage caused by foxes to their property or agricultural activities. Each region may impose hunting quotas to maintain a balanced and substantial fox population. This measure is designed to prevent overhunting and preserve ecological balance. The Australian government explicitly prohibits the use of certain capture methods considered cruel or environmentally hazardous, such as metal traps and toxic substances. This places an added responsibility on hunters to adopt safe and sustainable capture methods. The journey from the wild to the plate demands strict adherence to food safety regulations. Fox meat must undergo meticulous processing to meet safety standards and ensure consumer well-being. While the legal framework sets the stage for responsible consumption, challenges arise in its effective enforcement. Farmers may encounter difficulties in gathering the necessary documentation and proof required for the hunting license application process. Local authorities may grapple with the shortage of manpower and resources, hindering their ability to monitor and inspect fox activities effectively. With a relatively low demand for fox meat in Australia, selling this exotic meat may prove challenging, creating a hurdle in transforming hunting efforts into a thriving market. As we delve into the complexities of legal landscapes, potential solutions emerge to overcome these challenges. The Australian government could streamline and simplify the hunting license application process, making it more accessible for farmers. Investing in additional resources for local authorities will strengthen their ability to monitor and regulate fox hunting activities, ensuring compliance with legal standards. Right at the heart of Australia's diverse ecosystem, the fragile balance has been threatened by invasive fox meat consumption. These foxes, which plays a key role in regulating smaller animal populations, throw a ball into the mix when they end up on the dinner table. This raises some real questions about unintended consequences for the environment. Let's talk geographically. The applications of this ecological imbalance hits hard in areas where fox populations are exploding, especially in rural and wild areas where these cunning creatures thrive.
Now prepare yourself for some numbers. A study by the University of Melbourne drops a bomb consuming fox meat could cause a whooping 40% increase in rat numbers. Probably you're asking what is the big deal about this, right? Well, it causes trouble for crops and opens the floodgates for disease transmissions. The complicity of this ecological puzzle is real. To navigate the murky waters of ecological impacts, we need more than just surface-level understanding. It is time to roll up your sleeves and learn the geographic nuances and statistical evidence that underpin informed decision-making. Revisiting the geographical impacts, this ecological imbalance is more severe in areas with dominant fox densities, especially in rural and wild areas. Proposed solution, looking ahead, we need to increase research efforts to comprehensively assess the impacts of fox meat consumption in specific ecosystems. Strategic management measures are the name of the game to ensure we delicately balance the ecological scale. In the complex dance of ecological consequences and the environmental benefits. Reaching a conclusion requires more than just a cursory glance. The decision is to enjoy invasive fox meat isn't simple at all, requiring a comprehensive understanding of the potential impacts. Fox invasions cost Australia more than $1 billion in economic losses each year. More than 20 native Australian animal species are in decline due to invasive foxes. Australia's budding fox meat industry produces around 100 tons per year as we explore the ecological mystery of invasive fox meat consumption. It is important to stay up to date with the latest research and legal regulations. The complicity of this problem requires a careful and informed approach as we strive to predict nature's fragile balance. If you found this video interesting, leave a comment with number 5 down below in the comment section so you can let us know that you'd like to watch more of these series in the upcoming videos. Goose meat, although a popular traditional dish in some countries, in the United States, that is often not popular with the majority of people. The first main reason is the taste. Goose meat has a rich and fatty flavor, which is not suitable for the common taste of many Americans. According to a survey by the American Poultry Association, only about 10% of Americans choose to eat goose meat. To better understand this reason, we can study American culinary tastes. Chicken is the most popular meat, accounting for about 60% of total poultry meat consumption, according to research by the American Poultry Association. Pork and beef accounts for about 25% and 15% respectively. In contrast, goose meat accounts for only 1%. Thus, it can be seen that chicken is a popular choice with a mild flavor suitable for American cuisine. The second reason why goose meat is not popular in the U.S. is cost. Goose meat has a high price, becoming a luxury dish. Price is a big barrier. 
making many Americans unable to afford an expensive dish like goose meat. Many people choose popular and more reasonably priced meats. According to a survey by the American Poultry Association, the average price of goose meat in the U.S. is about $20 per kilogram, much higher than chicken meat, about $4 per kilogram, and pork is literally $5 a kilogram. In addition, there are numbers of other reasons why goose meat is not popular in America. Goose meat can be high in cholesterol, which is a concern for health-conscious people. At the same time, some people may have an allergic reaction to goose meat, creating an additional risk when ingested. More detailed analysis by region in the U.S. shows that there are differences in the popularity of goose meat. The north and central regions often have a higher proportion of people consuming goose meat than the south and west regions. In the north, about 50% of people favor goose meat, while in the west, only about 5%. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species. Do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.